channel. It's Mama's cooking show. I have a new slicer machine. Well, guys, apparently, because she has no thumbs and doesn't want to risk what fingers she does have, I get to show you this slicer. It's a Safe Slice Mandolin by Dash. And it says it's a safer way to slice. And you open this up and it shows you all the features. So it has a julienne knob and a matchstick knob. So you can do julienne slices and you can do little matchstick slices. I like matchstick carrots, so that I'll make use of that. And then here's a slicing dial. Rotate the, the back dial to change the thickness just from 0.5 to 8 millimeters. Also has a chute, a pusher, a container, and a brush. So a safer way to slice includes in included ingredient pusher, holds food in place, uh, protecting your fingers. So that'll be really nice for my husband who can't see. Dial it in, rotate the back dial to choose the thickness of the slices. That'll be really nice. Compact storage. It's collapsible, uh, design fits in a standard kitchen drawer. So that'll be nice as well. So it says precision and safety in one, 30 different cuts, easy to use, no loose blades, durable materials, and safe cleaning. And if you wanna scan the little QR code, I don't know if you can uh, scan it off the screen, but um, then you can see them use it at Dash. But you can see me use it in here in a minute. So here it shows you the different thicknesses that you can cut to. So from a really thin, like um, potato chip kind of size, thickness, I would say, all the way to an eight millimeter. So if you like particularly thick slices, so and anything in between. So that's pretty neat. And it shows you using the pusher. And so it does look like it's gonna be a lot safer, especially for my husband who can't see. So it shows you the thick slices and the thin slices, like I said, more like a potato chip slice. And it has big dices, small dices, matchstick, and julienne. So, all right, well, I'm gonna open this up, get it washed up, and we'll show it to you in a moment. All right, so I, when I was unboxing this, I noticed that, that it had this please read before using right here that we have a b uh, before using your safe slice mandolin make sure the main stand is pulled all the way out or the ingredient container will not sit properly so it's showing you how to make sure and then b says both sides of the stand should click securely into place and C, turn the knobs on the back of the mandolin to create different slices, including matchstick and julienne cuts. And then note, the ingredient chute is sized for safety reasons. Some larger ingredients, like sweet potatoes, may require that you slice them in half before, before placing in the ingredient chute. So that is some important things to note. They also provide you with the manual which not only tells you about the different features and the different um, cuts that you can achieve, but it also has, you know, in the how, all the how to use and all that, but it also has a uh, recipe guide to get you started. Doesn't that look really yummy? I think it does. And so they have potatoes gratin or potatoes gratin. Looks really good. I'll be doing that. Not right now, but I will be doing it. Apple tart, Asian slaw, zucchini bread, which I can't wait to do. I love zucchini bread, just haven't had it in a very long time. So I want to do that one. Shoestring potatoes, love those, also known as hash browns. Uh, ratatouille, and Tuscan flat bread with mushrooms. I can't have the mushrooms, obviously, because I'm definitely allergic, but I can do all the rest of that. Shaved Brussels sprout salad. 
and then it tells you about customer support and the warranty. So far with any Dash product, I have not had to contact customer support. I've never had an issue. Um, and then here's their little hello foodie thing asking you to, you know, double your warranty and to join us on their social media. And, you know, they want you to rate their product. And so far, everything's been five stars. Let's see how this one uh, measures up to the other Dash products. I'm going to pause you here, wash this all up. Oh, here's a little cleaning brush. It's a little round brush here, but it has this um, kind of bladed end, I think probably in case you get anything stuck between the blades of the mandolin. But anyhow, I'm gonna wash everything up and then you can see it in action because I'm gonna slice up some onions. Okay, so we're all washed and cleaned and we are assembled. So um, this is where your collection, little collection basket goes. The feet go down inside. There's um, like a groove here so that it fits properly in here and it can't go anywhere. See, it's got these little grooves here that the legs fit in. And so fit between of our, snap it down in so that's good and secure. Now, your handle here, it comes in the locked mode here. So you push it down just a little bit and twist it. And now it's in the use mode here. And here we have a little um, button that you, these little things you slide up and down. And this is the, um, sort of like the guard, the guide that, the chute that the, um, if I can get it on here properly, it's kind of hard to do it at this angle here. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do it backwards so I'm not being able to get it in properly. There you go. So that's how it on there, pretty snug and secure. And then here's your little um, plunger that pushes your food down that has these spiky things so that it will hold your food in place. So the first thing we're gonna try is cutter. Let me cut the end of it off. That usually helps um, with the mandolin. So the first thing we're gonna try is to cut some potato chips that we will then do in my mini uh, air fryer. So let's see how this works out. Well, you should use your plunger. <laughs> Yes, there. <laughs> I can't do it and keep my hands up. So my son is helping. So don't push with too much pressure, just steady pressure, and let's see how this goes. Is that the absolute thinnest? Or is that, is that is on number one? Okay, so how do you go to is number one like the smallest? There is a zero. Did I just go to the zero? Wow, guys. From this that you can actually can you see my finger through it? Yes, you can. Uh, this is the number one, which is already pretty thin. Whoops, if I can get it in the frame. Um, which you can also see my, see my finger through, but not near as much to, and you know, and it's pretty stiff, right? To this little floppy guy that is like paper thin. And I think this one would make the better potato chips. So let's try that. And we'll let you know because we're going to do them in the Dash Air Fryer. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually put it in a baggie, shake it up with a little bit of olive oil and salt. And because I like pepper, maybe some pepper. And then we're going to put them in the air fryer and see just how crispy we can get them. We'll have to make sure that we shake it frequently so that they don't stick together real bad. Um, because otherwise, you'll have raw ones in the middle. Now that took that down. Let's see what's left, John. Guys, this, this little guy, that is what is left. It sliced it down that far. Now you know you can't really do that very well when you're doing it when your hands are near the blade. So. I just cut everything but these two little tiny end pieces of that potato. Let's dump that into it. John, can you give me a, a Ziploc, a um, gallon size Ziploc? And we will go ahead and um, I'll have the process with just a 
just a tiny bit of oil. The point of an air fryer, obviously, is to reduce the amount of oil. However, fries and things, um, french fries and potato chips and things, if you coat them very lightly with just a little bit of olive oil and then put it in there, all the excess oil goes down in the basket underneath of underneath of the potatoes. So you're basically just getting just enough on the outside to give it a crisp texture without without having too much oil. And it also gives it that fried flavor without adding very much oil. So we're talking, uh, if you put in about a teaspoon of oil and shake it up, you're not even gonna get a fourth of a teaspoon of oil total if you eat the whole entire batch. Um, but to the best of my, you know, um, measurements with it, get salt and pepper and put it in there. Hey, you know what? No. Let's try this. Let's put some cavenders. We'll put some cavenders on it. Cavenders all-purpose Greek seasoning is really good on potatoes. So we're going to actually put that on it instead of the salt and pepper. And the oil will also help the stick. And the air fryer does like to blow a lot of the seasoning off, especially if you don't use the oil first. So this will help some of it stick. We'll still lose some, but not near as much. And um, bring that baby over here one second in front of... We are using our Dash Mini Air Fryer, this teeny tiny little guy right, right there. And we're, pick, we're making spaghetti sauce. So we're doing a lot of things at once here. Um, anyways, love that teeny tiny mini air fryer. It's great for one person or even two if you don't, you know, if you're doing... You shouldn't have uh, so many, say, french fries that you need the big one for two people. That, that does not enough. It's a side dish, not a main course, right? All right, so we are going to go on, and um, I want to cut this carrot, and I think that I'm going to cut it in half and see how this does if we put them side by side so we can push them through. But we are going to turn it into um, julienne, um, what I consider a matchstick um, carrot, is what they consider julienne. I don't want it to be the thinnest julienne, you know, the smallest julienne. I want it somewhere between the, the thicker one and the thinnest one. Can you help me with that? Because you read the instructions. We are gonna cut these up. We're gonna do the onion last so that everything doesn't taste and smell like onion. We're just doing this to see how the cut and how it turns out. Where's my, oh, I put it, you know what guys? I put it inside the pusher. Like, the a, like a goof. No, the guard. Oh, guard. I it's, thought you said something it's else. It's a food guard. Yes, food guard. Yes, pusher. They call it a pusher. Here. But yes, it is a guard. You push. I will. Now, this is very easily done by one person. Um, but I can't because then I'm crossing in front of the camera. So, let's see how these are done. Hmm. Not what I was going for. These are discs. Not what I was trying for. So let's try this again. Where are we going? All right. Let's try, let's try this. This, guys, this is real TV, and we are learning. We are learning together. The carrots are a little bit different with the pusher, you know. But you don't want to stick your fingers down in here. Let's see where we're going. This is more like what I was trying to get. So, you know, a nice, nice size. They're kind of flat, and they're not quite. I would have liked them to be about half this width. You know, a little more square, but um, but this will do. This would be good in your coleslaw or your salad. You could go a little thinner. Let's try that a little thinner. Now think of this uh, with your potato, which would actually, you know, be longer slices. Think about if you did this for your um, hash browns. Sorry guys, you know I have trouble remembering the name of things. Wonder what happens if I put this. This little guy. It makes it smaller. Okay, that's, okay, can you push that down? Let me push these out of the way, the bigger ones, so that we can see the smaller pieces. More like what I was thinking about for coleslaw. Can you hold that? I think this would be good for cutting up the, you gotta, they're not getting pushed down on the blade. Now push, put the pusher in and see. Hmm, okay. Sorry, I don't have the biggest carrots, guys. 
I wish I would have been, don't push quite so hard. I wish I would have been more prepared. Oh, wow, guys. I think we got more like a dice thing going on. No, it's it's just because the carrots are, we're gonna do dice next. Hey, I'm throwing it everywhere. This is more like what I was talking about, a little more square. So I got, I got what I wanted. Um, and if I would have had a bigger carrot, you know, but that would be really tasty and some, any of this would be, and a coleslaw. I don't have any, um, I don't have any cabbage right now, or I would definitely be making coleslaw. Um, what's left over that we did not cut, John? Let's show what, what we have left. Huh. Nothing. Nothing? There's nothing left over? Guys, look at that. Now tell me you're going to do that without this machine. Sorry, I'm flinging it everywhere. It would not usually make a mess if you weren't at a really odd, wonky angle from your machine which I am trying to stay out of the video. And um, thankfully I just sanitized my counter. So no cat hair or cat footprints. All right, now our um, onion's gonna have a little carrot mixed in, but we are going to do kind of a large dice. And at the same time, we are going to be having these uh, potatoes go in. John, um, sprinkle over the top with just a little more cavenders, not too much, because that stuff gets pretty salty. I put a ton in there already. But just a tiny bit over the top, because it's going to mostly blow off. Okay, and then when we shake it, we may um, put just a little more too. Don't put salt, okay? Maybe a little tiny pepper, not too much. All right, stick that in the air fryer, and uh, we'll be shaking those very frequently. All right, I'm not gonna put this in my spaghetti sauce, although I could. Because and carrot be pretty yummy. Oh, carrot is good in spaghetti sauce. It's a good way to hide vegetables from your children. If you um, cut it up really small and hide it in the sauce, cook it in the sauce. Like me, uh, I wouldn't touch it. Yeah. Like, like John didn't particularly want it, but actually my husband just wants to eat it, <laughs> so he wanted the carrot anyway. So, anyways, guys, um, there's one <laughs> confused little sl couple slices in there when I didn't have it dialed up right. But look at that, very nice. We have different sizes and shape, which would not drive them nuts on any kind of cooking competition. But um, yeah, we're not competing here. We're just learning how to use our new machine. All right, and this is not a mini. Um, you know, usually it, I, um, a lot of my things are minis, especially from Dash or Nostalgia. Nostalgia. I always say it wrong. I'm, I've got a person that tells me all the time I say nostalgia wrong, however I say it. So I apologize to you and to those folks, and I just got carrot everywhere. Uh, I don't mean to say it incorrectly. All right, so put the pieces and parts back on, John. And let's you're see, gonna I have may to cut have that to. In half. Yeah, I'm thinking. See, this is going to be too big. Like they were talking about sweet potatoes and things, maybe being too large. So I'm actually going to cut this in half. It's all right because I'm dicing it. I don't want rings. I want dices. And it's going to have to go in fourths. Actually, I got a big onion, guys. I'm not begging, but I think I could maybe possibly. Mm, no, let's just put it in like that. What'd you do? Don't don't turn on my stove by accident. I have a very touchy gas oven, uh, stove, and if you just bump into it, it makes a burner ignite, and we really don't want to do that. All right, John, I know you're, I know you're busy, but I need this on the dice. I think I've got it set on dice. We think. We'll <laughs> We're gonna out. find this out together. No, it's more of a Julianne kind of thing going on. So let's find the right. How many times do you turn that? One time is up, two times is down. Okay. Well, see, things I don't know. Oh, no, Julianne. In. Okay, so let's go. It's a learning curve, guys. Learning curve. Doesn't matter. It all tastes good in the sauce, right? I'm just trying to figure out the different... Don't push quite so hard. I wasn't when you push pushing. hard... I wasn't pushing. Mm. Well, anyways, whatever it was doing, it was making it difficult. And see, we're still getting Julianne, so... Or matchstick, possibly. I think it may be matchstick, but regardless. Which is basically Julianne. <laughs> Just different size. Nope, we are not getting any dices. Why are we not getting any dices? All right, read the instructions again. Although, I mean, these are perfectly fine with me. Uh, it actually does not specify. 
Well, we're going to keep dialing things until we figure this out. It tells you how to get it to matchstick. Well, we need a piece of onion. And to Julie Ann. For dicing, no, it does refer not. to page 16. Now that's a big old slice. Now, come on. Not what I was going for. Uh, we're trying to get it figured out for you guys. Can't have onion on the floor because you can't have a curious cat, you know, get sick. Let's take that. I don't mind the smaller, like, julienne strips. It's fine. But I really want the diced for my sauce. And I don't want that great big piece in there. We can maybe put it back through. Make it, cut it some more. Okay, so you have to full, you have to regularly slice first. So you have to do that first. Okay. And then turn it sideways and cut it again. No, turn it sideways. So that the cuts are going the other direction. Nope, nope, stop. See how the cuts are? Maybe put them in this way so that they'll cut the opposite. I think that's going to make them too thin. Uh, I'm just trying to make dices. At the moment, I'm just trying to figure out how to dice it. Hmm. Guys? Yes, yeah, so. Not, I mean, kind of, but they're being held together by the membrane or skin or whatever on the onion. So, that's kind of weird. Hmm. Well, I mean, if you want to sit there and break it apart every little piece, I did get dices. Let's try it again. Alright, maybe I need to go... It needs to be flat. Maybe it has to so you've got to watch through here. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to see if maybe I needed to change the depth of the blades or something. I don't know, guys. Hmm. I love it, but I don't like it. I was just turning around to shake them. You know what I'm saying, guys? I love it, but I don't particularly, you know, like the dicing. I'm going to have to really play with it and figure out the dicing a little are. better. <sighs> You're trying to keep me out. I don't want to be in the video today. You can put it through all, you, all the times you want, but I'm not getting what I'm needing. Hmm. Well... Looks like we're having julie and onion in our spaghetti sauce. Hmm. No. I'm just going to cut it up. Go. One more dial. See if that's part of it. Maybe I messed it up. Alright, now we're going to put these back in. Now, there. let's try it the way I was going to run it through instead of putting it through that way. Mm -mm. Just going to stick them in. Hold on. Um, guys, the old-fashioned way for dicing, to me, is better. And maybe when we get this figured out, I'll change my mind. But right now, I think it's good for everything but dicing. But again, that may just be me. And you're trying to go in... Long ways. Long ways. Well, we'll try it. No. No, we're just julienning, kind of. Mm -hmm. I don't know guys, I would stick to just cutting up with a knife for the dice. At least until I figured it out. When I figure it out, I may do another video showing you the dice. If I don't, it's because I didn't figure it out. <laughs> you know? That's all I can... You turn this one, one dial. It's got those little... <laughs> guys, maybe? I might have just figured something out. If you fiddle with the dials enough, you get kind of littler chunks. Uh, but I didn't. I didn't have enough in there to, to show you. Um, I'm going to just use them as they are. I mean, obviously, it's spaghetti sauce. It doesn't matter. But I wanted diced. I got not diced, but I used all the onion. There's nothing left. I used an entire onion, and I got different shapes. <laughs> which kind of bothers my OCD, but um, then there's this little guy, this little brush that you can brush out the different, you can use 
the you know the kind of knife blade side to pick out pieces and you can use a little brush side to get in there because you don't want to stick your fingers in there and get those loose pieces out so that's pretty neat make sure you wash your brush otherwise that would be pretty gross but yeah that works actually i'm just sort of pushing it up and down and it's actually pushing all the pieces out of the blades um so you have your dial here for your thickness and these you you kind of do this and then kind of turn them and snap them back in and that changes um how those blades are cutting but we have to figure all that out just a little bit better and anyways guys um because i'm having trouble figuring out the dice I think I might want to give this more of a four and a half meows. I know, halves, really, Michelle? But I don't want to give it a four, and I don't quite want to give it a five. Um, it's almost a five because of all the other things that I'm able to do easily, but just not quite a five because I'm not having any luck, really, with the dicing. And that is probably operator error and not on the machine, and that's why I only want to take off a half a meow. So there you go, and I hope that you will give this video a great big old thumbs up, and I hope that you will let me know in the comments below what you think of this machine. I got it again because my husband is blind and I want to protect his fingers, and um, he has had all kinds of mandolins, but so far I would say this is the best one in terms of safety. Safety, I give this one the five meows, and if I was doing, you know, I would give, if I could, uh, and I guess I could, it's my channel, I would give it a thousand meows, but for safety. Like I said, but, and you know, the whole functionality and the ease of use is more of a four and a half right now, four, four and a half, because I can't get the dice correct, but I've, we did figure out everything else, and I'm sure, like I said, that's really operator error, so it's not really fair to the machine or fair to Dash to take off any meows, but, um, but there you go. So please give me, uh, let me know in the comments what you think of it. Um, I will leave a link in the description. And if you don't want to talk about the machine, then just stop by and say hi. And make sure you say hi to Chef Mau Mau. She's feeling a little replaced. Uh, let, me, let me introduce you to someone. I can't touch the someone because I have onions on my hands. But this, guys, is... <gasps> Mr. Nubbins. This is Mr. Nubbins, and he's Mr. Nubbins because he's a Manx, which means he's got just a little short nub of a tail. Some of them don't have any. Some of them have a short nub tail, and some of the babies can be born with just a normal tail. Um, these guys the, uh, are the oldest recognized cat breed, and they came from a genetic mutation for because of lack, you know, not enough uh, genetic variability in the cats. Um, in the Isle of Man and now uh, they're pretty highly desired. I actually got Mr. Nubbins. I rescued him for free and um, and he's my solid black cat. So now I have solid black, I have solid white and I have Mau Mau, the tuxedo, black and white and I have Spicy, a um, variation of a tuxedo cat that um, is really a cool variation. I'm sure you've seen her and I also have Bugatti, who is mostly white with just some black, a black tail and some spi uh, black spots on his back. You know him. He's got the Mickey Mouse head uh, silhouette on his back. Here's Miss Spicy Spice with her half, I don't want to touch her with my onion hands, but with her half black and half white going on. Isn't that really cute? She is so beautiful. All my cats are really beautiful. So yes, if you can count correctly, that is five guys. Count them. Five cats. One solid white, one solid black, one tuxedo and uh, sort of a variation on the tuxedo and Bugatti who is mostly white with some black. Yes, all black and white or black or white. So that is the new addition to our family and this is the new addition to our kitchen gadget family. Please uh, also maybe say hi to Mr. Nubbins which we call Nubby Nub or Nub Nub or Nubbers. Baby Nubs. Nubbers. Nubbers. <laughs> Let us know what you think of that little guy in the comments below. And I don't want to let them know. I don't want them to see how many there is. Well, guys, I'm going to give you a very brief look. Don't be nosy, but you can just take a peek. 
that box, if you can see, stand, whoops, don't, don't be nosy, just to see the height of it, the size of it, there's my son John, it's very big. There's a lot of makers left. We will be doing a lot of makers. All of those are, well, most of those are from Dash. So, and most of them are minis. So, please hang out and watch Mau Mau's cooking show. And you will see lots of new minis coming very soon. Let's see how those, um, let's see how those are doing. Let's get just a peek of potato chips. Let me see. It's close enough. They're not all the way done, guys, but you can get... Uh, an idea. Some of them are cooking more than uh, ouch, uh, others. I touched the side of the pan. We need to separate them. Alright, so you can see they are starting to get very done. Um, and some of them are very raw because they are between other chips. They're stuck together. We're going to peel them apart and get them cooking better like this one. So there you go guys. What do you think? Please subscribe to my channel. And please share my videos with others so that they can subscribe as well. Because there's a lot of these mini cookers and Dash products and others coming very soon. Thank you for watching and listening to me babble. And I will see you again soon in another video. Bye. Alright guys, just a quick update on those chips. Um, because we were doing so many other things, they didn't turn out perfect. But man, they are tasty. I don't know if you can hear that. They are very crunchy, crispy, and so tasty. And that was one of the chips. Even the dark ones, which I prefer. And I love the curly ones. All right. Those are really good. Mm. Definitely, definitely loving that mandolin.